Deborah Stoiber. I am the collection manager in the moving image department at the George Eastman Museum in Rochester, New York. And right now, um, I'm going to give you a behind the scenes tour of our nitrate holding areas at uh, the George Eastman Museum. This is at the Louis B. Mayer Conservation Center. It's in the outskirts of Rochester. And we have over 24,000 reels of nitrate film located in our collection. And we're very, very proud of this collection. Uh, behind me, you're going to see a little bit of our workspace that we do have available for uh, our staff and our students to work on collection pieces, working on conservation of nitrate motion picture film. To give you a little bit of a background of what nitrate is, is that it is a film stock that was created in the 1890s and it uh, was used to import theatrical film releases all the way up until 1951. At that time, um, Kodak came out with a new film stock that had one significant difference. It wasn't flammable. Up until that point, all nitrate films are known for their uh, ability to uh, catch on fire and be very, very, very uh, damaging uh, to projection booths, to people, to anything, if they were in a conditions that would um, cause them to catch on fire. So uh, we store it separately from the rest of the museum. We do store it out here, and I'm going to give you a tour of these areas because this is actually not open to the public, and it's important that um, we give people an opportunity to see these areas. So one of the things we focus on here at the Louis V. Mayer Conservation Center is inspecting the films and conserving them so that they can continue to last long after our lifetimes. I'd like to take an opportunity, this opportunity to show you uh, one of the highlights in our collection. This is a film from 1907. It is a Pathé French film called, uh, in English, The Lawyer Enjoys Himself. And uh, it is a black and white silent film that uh, has a beautiful image and quality going through it. We do have a large collection of films from that time period, and they are all being conserved here at the Conservation Center. And uh, let me show you a little bit of this film here on the bench. So this film is about 475 feet in length, and it is uh, put on a workbench where we wind through the film and check it frame by frame from one end to the other to make sure that there is no films decomposing, there is no mold or water damage, that there is nothing going on to create any sort of decay with our particular film. Now, I do have a piece of paper over my light box, and normally this isn't the case, but I found my camera was uh, the light was glaring off of the plastic and giving a poor image. So normally this wouldn't be here, you would just see this light box underneath. And using my loop, I'm able to also check a little bit more about the image quality that I am seeing as well on my film. And I can get a little bit more of an up close and personal look to see what is going on to help with film identification, to help with determining how scratched it is, to help determine the generation of the film, the closer the generation to the original, the better quality of the image. And I'm able to get a little bit more information using one of my loops here in the collection. So here we are back in the vaults, and I wanna give you a quick tour of what we do have. We do have 12 vaults on site. Each vault holds 2,184 film cans, and each vault is kept at 40 degrees Fahrenheit 30% relative humidity. The room we are currently standing in is our holding area. And the inspection area I just showed you is at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And our vaults are at 40 degrees. So what we are trying to prevent is films from developing condensation or water uh, on the images by going from an extreme low temperature to a more ambient temperature. So films do stage in here for 24 hours before they go in and out of our vaults. And this space is at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is especially important in the summertime when it is a lot more humid in Rochester. And it's especially important for all of our really fragile films. We do have a lot of films out here that are suffering from a little bit of decomposition or decay. And that shock can actually cause more harm than good. So by storing films in here, we are able to keep a better control over uh, how the films are cared for 
in our vaults. So what does the inside of a vault actually look like? Well, let's take a look. And we'll pan up. And again, each vault holds 2,184 film cans. What you're seeing in the back is actually not a door. It is a blowout panel so that in case there ever was a fire, uh, the oxygen would have a way to leave the vault without oxygen coming in, which would create a backdraft. So let's go ahead and go into our vault. And we can kind of see a little bit more of what's, what we have up here. So here's a little bit of our collection right here. I'm going to pull one can for you to see. And here's a film. Oh, Gone Fishing, a Vitafoam film from 1953. So, yeah, this is um, one example of what we do have in our collection. I know there's people out there who wish they probably could go fishing right about now. Um, but here we are, a little bit in our collection here. And we keep films two cans per shelf so that we don't have a lot of weight on the cans. The films can sit very comfortably and quietly in these vaults. Each vault looks exactly the same. And you can hear a little bit of the background noise of our HVAC. We do have uh, air exchange every 20 minutes in our vaults, a fresh air exchange. So if films are decomposing, any odors that are released from that film is immediately removed from the vaults so that it actually has a fresh air feeling in these vaults all the time. So I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the collection here really is incredible and amazing and I enjoy working on it very, very much. Uh, thank you again to all of our museum members. Without your support, we wouldn't be, be here today. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the students that I normally have working out here with me from the L. Jeffrey Selznick School of Film Preservation. Normally I teach how to handle nitrate film on days like today. Um, I've been teaching in the program for over 20 years. Uh, so yes, you can learn how to preserve move, moving images here in Rochester, New York. If you want more information on that, you can certainly go to our website, eastman.org, and click on Learn, and you'll find links to the Selznick School of Film Preservation. If you want more information on how to donate to the museum so that we can keep going with our conservation practices, you can also find that on our website as well at eastman.org and click on donate. Thank you again. Uh, my name is Deborah Stoiber. Again, I'm the collection manager and I uh, spend my time working on the motion picture films here at the George Eastman Museum. And thank you for spending some time with me today.